What really goes on inside the world's most powerful office? Tourists can only glimpse the outside. News crews mostly capture staged events. But only one person sees and photographs everything. Who decides when you can get into a room? Um, I just walk in. Pete Souza is the chief White House photographer, a former newspaper photographer handpicked by President Barack Obama to snapshots both political and private, taking some 20,000 pictures every month. You've been quoted as saying you are the luckiest SOB photographer in the world. Why? I am. Right now, I'm focused on documenting this presidency for history. I'm not worried about uh, tomorrow's newspaper or next week's magazine. I'm worried about uh, creating a body of work that will last, you know, hopefully maybe 500 years. It is Souza's second tour here. All right, let's go. He was an assistant photographer in the Reagan White House who jumped at the chance to document history once more. Every one of his photos goes into the National Archives for later release. The White House publishes 75 online each month, and a few make it onto the White House walls. Here is the president playfully adding weight to one of his staffers. That is yeah. such a funny shot. You can't plan or for something like this to happen. It just happens. But you have to be ready. You have to be ready. One of the president's favorites was taken when he met the family of a White House worker. And his son very shyly said, Mr. President, I just had my uh, hair cut like yours. Can I see if uh, your head feels like mine? You know, and the president so bent over. Boom, I got one, one frame. I put down my head so that he could examine my hair. And uh, he helpfully pointed out all the gray hairs. And then he decided to pat me on the head just to get a feel for it, and Pete took a picture, and I think that one has stayed up through the, the whole year and a half, just because it reminds you uh, not to take yourself too seriously. President Obama spoke to National Geographic for a documentary to be aired later this month on PBS and for a companion book. Obama and his photographer have an understanding. Souza is free to photograph as long as he doesn't disclose what he overhears. There's nothing that Pete would do that in any way I would be worried about, and I, I think he feels the same way that I've got his back. And so it, Pete really does feel like part of the family. Photographers were outsiders for most of presidential history. James Polk in 1846 was the first to be immortalized with his cabinet. There are photos of James Buchanan, Andrew Jackson, and John Quincy Adams. Abraham Lincoln struck a pose before a campaign speech. A hundred years later, John Kennedy became the first president to appoint an official White House photographer. Private moments with Caroline and John John added to JFK's image then and still touch a chord. President Lyndon Johnson had a face that revealed everything and a style that held back nothing. Jimmy Carter is the only modern-day president not to have a White House photographer. Richard Nixon had one, but when it came to his resignation speech, perhaps the most memorable event of Nixon's presidency, Ollie Atkins was banished. Ollie? Yes. No. Only the CBS crew now is to be in this room during this. Only the crew. No, there, no, there will be no picture. No, after the broadcast. You've taken your picture. Didn't, didn't you take one just now? That's it. The unforgettable picture from the next day of Nixon looking back at the White House he was leaving was taken by David Hume Kennerly, soon to become photographer to President Gerald Ford, Nixon's successor. Kennerly, one of only four living former chief White House photographers, had intimate access to both the president 
and his wife, Betty. The day before the uh, Fords left office, Mrs. Ford was wandering around in the West Wing, shaking hands, saying goodbye. We walked by the cabinet room, which was empty, this male domain, and Mrs. Ford, who had a twinkle in her eye, said, I've always wanted to dance on the cabinet room table. And she took her shoes off, jumped up, struck a pose. I took a picture. She jumped back off, kind of brushed her hands. And she said, I think that'll do it. David Valdez really got to know the whole George H.W. Bush family. There they were with, with, you know, it was George and Barbara Bush, and they were all just having that private moment uh, one morning. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to be there. Robert McNeely remembers the dignified Bill Clinton. My favorite picture, it's him at the door of the Oval Office, but it captures this energy. He comes off the page at you. And the president who could ball out aid George Stephanopoulos. This is Bill Clinton. This is part of who he is. But if I take it and he sees me take it, I'm going to gonna get that full blast right in the face. So he's doing George, and I got to like it, and I'm like, I didn't frame it. You know, I've got it set, the exposure set, and it's like, goes back down. I go, man, I, may, I did it. Eric Draper was with President George W. Bush on September 11th. The president turned to see the very first images, Flight um, 77 hitting the second tower. Uh, another image when we learned that we were being escorted by uh, fighter jets. And that's when it truly sunk in in terms of uh, that we were you know, really at war. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States. And now it's Pete Souza's responsibility to provide not just a good picture of what goes on behind all those closed doors, but a true picture for now and for the future. Do you have a very favorite Obama picture that you've taken? You know, I don't. I mean, others do. I mean, I, I always, when, I, when, I af when somebody asks me that question, I usually say my favorite picture will be the one I make tomorrow. <laughs>